So I think that we're pretty much ill-equipped to talk about something or teach it if we haven't struggled with it ourselves. And it's with that spirit that I talk to you today about intuitive eating, conscious consuming, um, you know, overeating, how to prevent it, mindful eating habits, because it's definitely something that I've wrestled with in my life. I've always had a really big appetite. I love flavor and new cuisines and diversity in what I am eating all the time. I'm a little bit of a foodie and I have had trouble sometimes knowing the limit between what I am eating for a party in my mouth and what I'm eating for actual nourishment and where that line gets blurred. So I've been practicing intuitive eating for the last couple of years and I'll talk a little bit about what that means, but it doesn't mean that everything gets resolved overnight. Um, sometimes my weight does fluctuate, maybe seasonally based on different lifestyles and priorities that I have at different periods in my life. And to a certain degree, I think that's okay. Um, you know, we're not always in the same state of mind. We don't always have the same things that are going on in our lives that, you know, we're putting above other things. Like for example, if you're very busy and very focused on a work project, you might not be as hungry. You might be in an adrenaline mode and super focused and forget to eat. Uh, other times you might be falling in love and spending a lot of time with your partner on vacations and restaurants or snuggling at home and ordering in and you might put on weight because you're feeling relaxed. So, you know, weight gain does not equal negative and weight loss does not equal positive. Um, sometimes, you know, I've been at my skinniest when I've been really stressed. So let's just remove the idea of uh, heavy bad, light good, and instead focus on eating mindfully. So when I talk about overeating, I'm talking about going past the limit of what is best for your body, what feels nourishing for your soul. And when we go past that limit, we can feel the consequences and the symptoms, um, you know, feeling too full or too tired or bloated or lethargic or not having focus. Um, and we also can see the consequences, of course, in weight gain that does not feel healthy or right for us for some reason. Here are my six tips for avoiding overeating through mindful eating habits. So the first one that I consider the most important, and this is something I, I practice pretty routinely, especially when I'm eating alone, is to only do one thing at a time. This rule is beneficial in many areas of life, but this was a huge game changer for me and I actually noticed this quite young as an adolescent that if I was eating in front of the TV, for example, I was so unaware of what was going on into my mouth that, you know, by the time I finished the plate, I was like, did I even taste that? I want more. I want to enjoy it. I wasn't even aware of what I was consuming. So the absolute first step that you can easily make with no commitments to the quantity of what you're eating or the quality of what you're eating is just to reduce any distractions while you're eating. So no screens, no TV, no phone, no reading, no newspaper, just sitting there and focusing on the meal and you're eating. Of course, your mind is going to wander. You're not going to stay in a perfect state of meditation, but just not doing two things at once will really change the game. Your body wants to be conscious of what's going inside of it and it will help to signal you when you're full and you know what other nourishment you might need and so on. My second tip is to decide your portion beforehand. So let's say you're serving yourself dinner and you know you have a big pot of something on the stove. Make yourself a reasonable portion, maybe a little bit smaller than you would normally make. And once you go eat your meal and focus on it and only doing that one thing at a time, if you finish eating it and you feel like you want more, you can go serve yourself another smaller portion and eat that and then go back and see. The difference here is not serving ourselves the largest possible portion all at once, uh, eyes being bigger than our stomachs, and then sort of feeling like we should just finish whatever is on our plate. Another example of this is, I'm totally guilty of this as well, is you're just kind of eating in a hurry and you pull a bunch of things out of the fridge and you have them on the counter and people who know me will laugh because I, I'm known for creating these big um, spreads around me of this dip and this condiment and all these things. I like to have it all laid out, but that when that happens, we don't have a sense of portion. We're not really aware of 
when the meal begins and ends and it's quite easy to lose track of quantity and just get into the momentum of the flavors that we're experiencing so you know take the ingredients out of the fridge make yourself a portion put the ingredients away and if you decide you want more take the ingredients out make yourself another portion put it away and then see how you feel the third tip has to do with intuitive eating now this relates to a post i recently made on instagram where i said think with your body what does that mean instead of thinking with our head uh, this is the diet I heard someone is following. I told myself I would have this for breakfast. I would have this for lunch. Well, I had this for lunch yesterday. Well, this is what I have in the fridge. Well, this is what would be convenient and fast. All of that is coming from mental calculation. This is the Cartesian separation of mind and body, where our mind wants to tyrannically impose our, on our bodies an absolute truth, and this is what is ideal, and you should listen to me. But our bodies are so much more wise than our minds when it comes to holistic health. Our bodies know things that our mind doesn't. Let's say we're craving vitamin K or calcium, or calcium in combination with iron. If we truly listen to our cravings and feel out what our body's asking for, there might be some really smart recipes that are being composed based on our biological needs without our awareness. So when you're thinking about what you want to eat, regardless of what you have in the fridge for the moment, regardless of what you think might be available at the restaurant you're going to, start by tuning into your body and think, what is my body asking for? And maybe you'll have some images that'll come to mind, some cravings, uh, you know, some things that you feel inclined to. And let's say something comes up that's not particularly healthy, like, you know, a burger and fries. Well, even if you don't want to have the burger and fries and your mind steps in and says, last time you had that, you didn't feel very good. Okay, but you already have some information. You're craving something salty or savory rather than sweet. You're craving something substantial that has some protein and that has some fat. So from that, you can extrapolate, okay, this is not the time to have a bowl of granola and fruit. My body clearly wants something a little bit more hearty, a little bit more based on slow burning fats and proteins. And I'm gonna find out what I have and what is available around me that is the healthiest or most appropriate version of that thing. And sometimes it is good just to treat yourself with what you're craving, uh, so long as you're not doing this too often and too excessively. Because at least in my case, when I feed the craving and I just give my body what it wants, then I can let go of the craving. Whereas sometimes we can avoid the thing that we really want and we end up eating 10 things we don't really want instead and then it kind of balances out to the same thing. So instead of overeating something you don't want, why not go for the thing you actually do want and kind of cut the BS around it. The fourth tip has to do with getting into your senses and this is the mindfulness aspect. It's being really conscious of what you're eating as you're eating it. So the best way to do this is to slow down. It's not a race to get to the end of the plate. In fact, take pleasure. I know it's so hard for us in our culture just to enjoy things and focus on enjoying them as paradoxical as that is. But if you slow down and you really consciously chew each bite, you can say, mm, this texture, that flavor, focus on as many senses as you can, the smell, how it feels in your mouth, the combination of flavors, really embrace those little micro moments of enjoyment and a mindfulness trick is to pick out details you know of your environment that's what helps people with anxiety to say okay um, look at the texture of that leaf look hear the sound of that breeze through the trees well it's the same thing when you're eating um, you know focusing on the crunch of a piece of toast and the way it softens with you know the spread on top look at those little details as you're eating as a way to get into the experience rather than checking out and going into your head and going off somewhere. The fifth tip is not to try to eat until fullness. So obviously we want to achieve satisfaction and I don't want anyone to go hungry, but you know, a previous doctor told me this, you eat until you're not hungry anymore because fullness actually takes time to settle into our bodies. So, you, you eat until you realize, hey, I'm not really hungry anymore. Maybe, do I really want the rest of what's on my plate? Maybe I don't. Doesn't mean that you don't have it, but perhaps you walk away, do something else and say, okay, you know, I might want a dessert. I might want a little chaser, as my father would say, after the meal, but I'm gonna go do something, see if it's really that 
I need to eat more or my mind just thinks I should eat more or I'm avoiding something I have to do later. Don't try to attain fullness because that usually means that we've overeaten. Just eat until you're no longer hungry anymore. Go do something else. And if you still feel hungry after you've had time to digest a little, by all means, return and serve yourself another portion of something. And the last tip is my favorite because it involves something bigger than our, our vanity and our self-optimization. And I mean, those things are important. Our own health is important. But to me, any idea of health that doesn't include the larger system and ecosystem to which we belong is limited. And it's not really true health as far as I'm concerned. So as you will get to know about me, I am definitely someone that prefers minimizing animal products or other products that impact our environment in negative ways. So, you know, eating locally, eating from permaculture farms, eating from small scale businesses that treat their animals ethically, all of these things are ideal. So what can we do to ensure that we have this conscious relationship with our food? Well, before you start a meal, this is probably the more secular equivalent of saying grace before a meal. Before you start a meal, it's easier when you're not with a huge group of people at a dinner party, but you can do it quietly in your head in any social situation if you want. You just take a moment to say thank you and feel gratitude for everything that went into your food. So the ecosystem of animals and plants and humans that contributed working together to produce each ingredient. So if you are eating an animal product, hopefully it's from a great farm, but in either case, take a moment to say, okay, you know, chicken, thank you for laying this egg and farmer, thank you for taking care of the chicken, hopefully in a fair way. And thank you for tending to the land that fed the chicken. You know, thank you to all those people that moved things down the line so that I could enjoy this egg now. And when we're conscious of the chain of command of people, of insects, of animals that bring us our food, maybe it's even your local health food store that makes an effort to stock quality products. When you think of all those things that went into what you're eating, you will develop a more integrated relationship with what you're consuming. It's no longer just a way to numb your feelings or fill a void. It becomes part of a meaningful web with your world as an individual. And you will probably, you know, naturally start to choose products that are more conscientious for your health, yes, but for the impact on the world, for animals' quality of life, and to support businesses. You know, if we thought that way about everything that we purchased and what went into what the products that we have in front of us, we would probably buy less things on Amazon and we would probably try and support businesses that also cared about all of the living beings affected in the creation of their product. So I love this, you know, just take a moment, whatever product it is, start by saying thank you and imagining all the forces that went into making your meal. And just by doing that, your heart will open, your mind and soul will become more awake to what's on your plate. And I guarantee you, you'll make more informed choices, both spiritually and physically. I hope this helps. It certainly helped me. And thank you so much for listening.